Welcome back to the Holistic Health Bites podcast. Today, we are gonna talk about 11 reasons why fasting has great benefits for your health. Number one, of course, we always talk about insulin on this channel, and insulin regulation is one of the biggest benefits to incorporating fasting into your lifestyle. When you're in a fasted state, your blood insulin levels significantly drop because your blood glucose remains low and well-regulated. Most people today are eating multiple times a day, which means they're also having multiple insulin spikes throughout the day. This happens with differing levels, depending on what you've eaten, what time you've eaten, if it's a small snack or a big meal, the order of foods you've eaten, all of these factors vary by how much glucose and insulin spike you get. But when you take a rest from digesting food, your insulin levels have the ability to come back down way more readily than when you're constantly eating. Even if you're eating a low carb diet, if you're eating frequently, you're still getting frequent insulin spikes. Number two is we can bring down inflammation. Fasting reduces inflammation and oxidative stress, which of course is damaging your heart and your blood vessels. Inflammation is a good thing. We do want it, but we want it at the right levels and at the right times. Inflammation is merely your body responding to fight an infection, to repair an injury, any of those kinds of things. But when our lifestyle is causing chronic systemic inflammation, it ultimately leads to problems and disease. Fasting can help improve this oxidative stress that comes when we're over consuming foods. So it actually helps repair at a cellular level. This in turn helps us feel much better, lowering our risk of chronic disease, reducing joint pain and reducing other signs of inflammation. Number three is improved heart health. This one goes along with reducing oxidative stress and overall inflammation, but heart health directly is impacted by high insulin levels as diabetes is the number one risk factor for developing heart disease. Fasting can improve heart health by reducing blood pressure and your triglyceride levels. Heart disease is the number one cause of death in the world. And when you regularly fast, your blood pressure can normalize through lowering insulin, which regulates water retention and mineral balance. It also has a great impact on how well your blood vessels can dilate and contract. During fasting, your body will also break down stored fuels, such as fat, releasing triglycerides and turning them into free fatty acids, which can then be used for energy. This can lower your overall triglyceride levels in your blood, which is one of the major risk factors for developing heart disease. Number four is fasting gives your body the ability to repair damaged tissues. These resting periods allow your body time to focus on repair. When you think about animals in the wild, if they are injured, even our dogs and cats, when they're injured, they don't eat. They're not out for a hunt. They're laying, they're staying hydrated, and they're fasting. That's the natural instinct when you're sick, when you're injured, any of these kinds of things, the body wants time to rest. Fasting allows your digestive organs to rest. This frees up all of that energy that's normally going to digestion to be used in other ways. So your cells can regenerate and repair can occur much easier, much faster while fasting. Number five is improved brain function. So many people who have gone through a fast have reported a much clearer mind, better memory, better ability to concentrate, even improved creativity when fasting. Have you ever noticed after a big meal, like say Thanksgiving, that you're sleepy or sluggish? This can happen even on a regular day. After you eat a big meal, the last thing you wanna do is go be active and turn on your brain power and be super focused. You wanna go sit on the couch or go take a nap. This is not the ideal way to feel your best. Fasting not only improves your short-term brain function, clearing and sharpening your mind, but it can also improve the long-term risks for things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other dementias. 
So really fasting can be tremendous for brain health. Number six, greater appetite control. Regular fasting counterintuitively actually makes you less hungry, not hungrier. The reason for this is it helps to regulate those hormones. One of the main hormones is ghrelin. This is your hunger hormone. You would think when you're hungry because you're fasting, you're not eating, that this would actually make ghrelin go up, but it doesn't. It actually makes ghrelin decrease. Fasting helps to regulate your hunger hormone. It seems really counterintuitive, but when you adapt to fasting and make it a regular part of your routine, you will actually feel less hungry. This takes all of that food focus out of your brain and you don't have to think about food all the time. Now, of course, we also have already discussed that fasting lowers your insulin levels, which also contributes to appetite regulation and it also regulates another hormone called leptin. Leptin is a hormone produced by your fat cells that is there to tell your brain that you have adequate stores. And if you have adequate stores, you don't need to keep eating. So it's your satiety hormone. But just like insulin, you can become leptin resistant. And when you become leptin resistant, your brain doesn't get the message that you're full. So you keep eating. Fasting regulates ghrelin, insulin, and leptin. Number seven, cancer prevention. Fasting may actually aid in preventing cancer formation, and it's been found to improve the effectiveness of chemotherapy for those who are already undergoing cancer treatment. There's a huge focus on this right now in the research world, and it's beginning to show that fasting not only reduces the risk factors associated with developing cancer, but it can also slow the progression. And this is often due to the fact that we know cancers feed on sugar. And so if you can regulate your blood sugar levels and not take in as much sugar, and if you can keep your insulin levels low, you can reduce the progression and growth rate of cancer. Insulin, again, is a growth and storage hormone. So when insulin is high, it can tell anything to continue growing, and that includes cancer. So after recent promising studies, fasting may be in a reasonable approach to improving the tolerability and efficacy of chemotherapy and other cancer treatments. Number eight, increased human growth hormone or HGH. This is a tremendous benefit for longevity, for greater fat burning, for muscle gains, and so many other benefits. So our bodies are producing this human growth hormone, which for adults, we're no longer growing, but this is a tremendously beneficial hormone for cell repair. Up to 80% of our human growth hormone is released in our first sleep cycle, which is about an hour and a half after we fall asleep. Fasting a few hours before bedtime helps to lower blood glucose levels, which promotes higher human growth hormone release. Number nine, immune system improvements. Consider fasting as a catalyst. Researchers say that fasting flips a regenerative switch, which is causing stem cell production to produce more white blood cells as our bodies are recycling the old ones. This turnover helps our immune system to become more robust and efficient. Fasting can also improve your immune system regulation, keeping it active enough to keep you healthy, but not overactive leading to autoimmunity. Number 10, autophagy. Fasting helps regenerate our bodies at a molecular and cellular level. So what's happening with white blood cells, as referred to in the last section, is an example of autophagy. The word autophagy in Greek means self-eating. Autophagy is the body's way of breaking down old, damaged, and worn out materials so that it can use those same building blocks to build new, healthier replacements. Fasting is one of the most effective ways to trigger this important process. We don't want damaged cells or cellular components to be reproducing because they're gonna reproduce all of those errors and all of the damage. And so they just kind of gunk up the system with deficient processes and inefficient systems. And lastly is fasting can be anti-aging. 
It is clear that fasting initiates so many positive changes in our bodies. These improvements slow down aging by keeping your DNA and your cells healthy. The benefits in fasting aren't just momentary. Over the course of a lifetime, they have a cumulative effect on longevity. So fasting helps regenerate every tissue in your body. So this means you can turn over your skin, which will give you less wrinkles. It means you can turn over your hair so you can have better, healthier hair. It means you can turn over your liver cells and your kidney cells and your pancreatic cells and all of the cells and tissues throughout your body. It can also repair hormones and enzymes and all of the things throughout your body that keep you functioning in top shape. Now, fasting does have tremendous benefits, but like everything in life, too much of a good thing becomes a bad thing. So we do want to do this the right way. We want to ease into fasting. We want to fast appropriately. And the piece a lot of people don't talk about when it comes to fasting is we really want to make sure that when you break your fast, the foods you consume, you do that in the right way. So you don't want to indulge in a bowl of ice cream after a long fast. You don't want to take in a bunch of junk food or hit a fast food joint right after a fast. You want to ease back into eating and you want to focus on good quality foods. You'll undo every benefit and cause even more damage if you add in the wrong foods at the wrong times in the wrong portions after a fast. Now, of course, there's a lot of nuance to this because how long did you fast for? How long have you been fasting for? Is this a new thing for you? Are you exercising? Are you sleeping? Are you on medications? Are you on supplements? There's a whole lot of factors that go into what an appropriate fast looks like for each individual. There's a whole approach to adding a fasting lifestyle in. If you would like assistance on this, send me a message and I will happily help you come up with a plan to implement fasting into your life the right way. Because it's not just about the fast, but it's also about how you break your fast along with everything else in your life. So in the meantime, be well and vibrant, and I wish you nothing but the best metabolic health.